Hello, everyone. How's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Crusader Kings 3, shall we? Hey, Corvette, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. So, this is the first time I've ever played this game. It's the first time I've ever played any of the Crusader Kings games. I've played some other Paradox games, but not this. So I'm excited to see what this is all about. Uh, a lot of friends of the channel have recommended this game to me, and I recently got the Xbox PC Game Pass, and this is a part of it, and so I thought, let's boot it up. I did a poll on the YouTube channel uh, asking what people wanted to see, and they uh, the vote was overwhelmingly in favor of a brand new game to the channel and so this is that surprise new game and let's dive in and see what kind of a game this is what it's even about and uh, hopefully these people will be pleased with the choices that we make in their resplendent finery All right, so here we go. It says, Welcome to Crusader Kings 3. Crusader Keith Kings 3 is a deep strategy game of dynasties and intrigue. If you are new to the world of Crusader Kings, we strongly recommend you play the tutorial. And we'll be doing the tutorial because um, I don't know... Uh, anything about these games hey pizza death that's right it seems to be all about imperialism good evening my friend oh okay corvette well i'm so sorry to hear that my friend hopefully this will help you relax take your mind off it somehow um this is Hello, Mr. Inadequate. What is up, my friend? Good to see you. Yes, this is my first time. I've never played any of these games, and so I'm going to have to go to the tutorial to learn. Uh, this is Petty King Merchad, and in the tutorial, we will play as Petty King Merchad, a ruler in Ireland, and we're going to lead our family and dynasty to defeat our enemies and become the King of Ireland. Oh, he looks like he's got a lot to think about there. He's stroking his beard. The weight of that crown on your head, huh, Petty King? Neo, good evening, my friend. So we're going to learn the game and play the tutorial. All right. Welcome to Crusader Kings 3. You are a medieval ruler. Your reign may be brief, but through your heirs, you can bring your dynasty to prominence. Land is yours for the taking by way of the sword or through marriage, and clever diplomacy can extend your reach far beyond the wildest dreams of any conqueror. There is no one way to win in Crusader Kings 3, only different ways to enjoy the your story as it unfolds. Interesting. Okay, Corvette. Let's hope for that, too. We should make a strategy before the tutorial starts. Interesting. This is a role-playing game, says Mr. Incompetence, as in play as your stats. If you're good at something, invest in it and play that way for each ruler. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Inadequate, for the tip. Nick Man, good evening. Okay, so I should um, play up whatever Petty King is good at in order to win. So, Pizza Death, my strategy is going to be um, uh, a polygamous marriage strategy where I attempt to marry uh, rulers from every territory on the globe and unite them under a single polygamous banner. I think that's, that's pretty much the best plan we've got. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see? Look at this guy's face. Petty King. 
knows how to get those ladies coming in. He's Irish. Yesterday's quest, how did I like it? It was good. I like the desert quests, um, honestly. I like the uh, the golems and the uh, the magic of the different uh, gods. So I, I'm a fan of the desert stuff, um, Nick Man. Survival is the best goal. Yeah, let's try. Let's go for that, uh, Mr. Nadequit. Let's just try not to get wiped off the map. Absolutely, Corvette. His last name is literally Chad. Isn't that good? All right, let's go for it. So we're going to use the WASD key to move around, and we can press the home key to take us to our capital. To zoom in and out, use the scroll wheel. Let's see how close we can go. This is about as close as we can go, this view here. And then we can zoom way out, and we can see the table that the map is sitting on. How about that? And then we zoom way into Ireland, and here we are. Different information is displayed at the different zoom levels, details map, political map, and paper map. Right, so this is details map, which displays information like about resources and structures. And then if we zoom out to the political map, we can see the boundaries. And then if we go out to the paper map, um, you know, <laughs> we see, oh my goodness, look how big this is. This is crazy. So we go all the way... Um, Basically, we, the edge of the world is here, uh, and we know some of Africa, not too much, and uh, we've got India, and then we kind of get into Russia, uh, and the Bering Strait, I guess, would be here, China, there's no Japan, there's no Americas, we haven't discovered those yet. It's a magic map, and we're stuck inside. You've played this game mostly as African or Indian rulers, but all is good. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know how we're going to conquer the world. I, I think we're going to go with Mr. Inadequate's plan of just not letting the world conquer us. Hey, hey, Dr. Octagonopus, good evening, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. I hope you are, too. Zoomed in, you have the ability to select and manage your holdings. Zooming out gives you an overview of all the realms. Crusader Kings 3 spans hundreds of years and many generations. Wow. Right now, time is standing still because the game is paused. Good. For this part of the tutorial, we'll keep the game paused while we walk you through some game concepts. Thank you. Uh, nested tooltips basics. Sometimes you will see blue highlighted text. This means you can hover your cursor over the words to display an informative tooltip. So like this, it says um, highlighted text. This information is here for you whenever you are unsure about a game concept. You can even move your cursor into this tooltip for even more information. Neat. Oh, let's try that. Let's highlight neat. Good job. We did do a good job. All right. Um, some of these tooltips may also have highlighted words which can also be tooltipped for further information. Duchy can lead to county, which can lead to barony. So a duchy... Oh boy. Okay. I'm learning a lot of uh, political history from a long time ago about aristocratic governance. Fantastic. Hey, Fading, good evening. Have you played this? Oh... I've heard about that turtle. It's a big turtle. Hey, Mr. Smith, good evening. How you doing? I know, Fading. It looks like an incredible deep dive, and that's why I'm terrified, but I'm jumping in. A duchy is a title ranking below a kingdom and above a county. The holder of a duchy has de jure rights to its constituent counties and can have counts as vassals. Duchies may be dormant and have no current holder. Such titles can be created by a ruler who controls at least half of its counties. Oh boy. Well, um, I'm going to need to get a legal degree in uh, medieval political hierarchies 
so I can understand what I control. But luckily, we've got the tooltips within tooltips within tooltips. Uh, a vassal is a ruler who has sworn fealty to another ruler, their liege. Okay. Um, fantastic. What is de jour? Most titles are considered part of a higher tier. Title de jour by law. For example, a ruler may be king of England, but their realm does not yet contain all the lands that are legally considered to be part of England. Now that I, I'm completely clueless on. Yeah, I know, exactly. Fading. I bet he has. Or he's broken it in some way. Um, by default, it takes a couple of seconds for a tooltip to, quote, lock in for mouseovers. This can be adjusted in the game settings. Oh, I see. So um, what that means is if you just flash over it, with your mouse it'll disappear but in the upper right you can see a circle filling in and then once it fills in the boundary around the tooltip solidifies it thickens and then that means I can move my mouse on top of it to highlight the other components and now once that solidifies I can go into these nested tooltips and we could just go on forever look at this I mean, this is a game in and of itself that I'm playing. How many tooltips can I get on the screen at once, people? Do you want to count? How about a thousand? That's where we're at. Okay. Um, sometimes, blah, blah, blah. All right. And we did all this stuff. Next. Oh, boy. Okay. Find a spouse. Well, the game is quite direct. There's just an empty ghostly silhouette where a spouse should go and some rings. We need to fill that in. Now let's talk about the game. Everything takes place on the map before you. The world consists of large and small territories, landed titles held by various rulers. Titles are represented by elaborate coats of arms shown as icons on the map. Okay. The icon representing your realm is that of your primary title, the most important and prestigious title you hold. Okay. I see. Hey, hey, Sir Theodore, good evening. I know. What a shame. He made money from divorcing. Ah, good idea. I know. You become uh, the real king of England if you learn all the tooltips, says Fading. You also, uh, your printer will print you out a law degree so you can practice law in, uh, you know, 1200 AD. Oh, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. I'm glad you could make it tonight. All right. So here's our info. We have three titles. Yes, I love having titles. Let's just collect a bunch. Ooh, yeah, the BK crown is very valuable. A title is essentially a certificate of land ownership. The smallest unit of land on the map is a barony. Baronies are organized into larger areas called counties. Counties de jure belong to a duchy, duchies to a kingdom, and kingdoms to an empire. Duchies, kingdoms, and empires do not always have a holder, but are titles that can be created by a ruler who controls enough of the corresponding territory. Wow. That's funny, Pizza. I know, Sir Theodore. That's that's my kind of law. Now, let's see what my titles are. I'm the Petty Kingdom of Munster, and my title is Duchy. And I also am the Earldom of Thomond and the Earldom of Ennis. All right, so I've got a couple Earldoms. I have a apparent claim... Um, to the Kingdom of Ireland, but it's unpressed. I, I'm I'm going for the throne, I suppose, but I don't have it yet. Yeah, we are we're a, an Irish petty king, Sir Theodore, trying to become the King of Ireland. I don't know, Pizza. Um, all right, let's see. If you hover over your character portrait. The coat of arms over your realm capital, um, Luimnich, will glow, I see. And the entirety of your realm will be highlighted. 
Munster is your primary title, which is why your realm is named after it. Munster is my primary title? Yes, that's one of my favorite cheeses. I didn't know I was playing a cheese simulator, but I am down. Oh, yeah. The guys across the water are very good friends. You can also you also hold the Earldom of Thomond as a separate title. If you zoom out, it will read Munster on this part of the map because you are the ruler of the area. Okay, so if I um, mouse over myself, I can see, like, my... This is my capital, um, basically. And then this is... I am uh, in this territory here. I guess this is the county, the, the big white line. Um, and I am the Earl of this area and this area, I guess. And then this is my barony. Wow. Okay, sure. As ruler, you can only hold so much land on your own. You will often have other rulers helping with the administration of the realm by holding land titles within your borders, making them your vassals. Okay, so I have other rulers helping with administration. Okay, good. I'm sure they're... They've got no designs of their own, and they're completely loyal. To find your own land, your domain, press the home key and zoom in. Once closer up, you can see the blue labels on the baronies that belong to you. In this case, it will only be Luam Nietzsche. Right, so this is my barony. It's got the little crown. The Earldom of Ormond is held by your vassal. So I've got somebody um, running... Ormond, and uh, I guess it's this person, Earl Ragnavald. Oh my gosh, look at this guy's title. Or, or his name is just Earl Ragnavald Sigtrigerson of Ormond. Great. I understand. I don't understand, but I'm going to click the big button that says I understand anyway. Hey, Dog Shark, what is up? skip to the insurgency of the rest of the kingdom. Yeah, that's going to happen pretty quickly. Characters. Three. Character. You play one of many characters in this world represented by character avatars. Your character is the ruler of a realm, indeed. You will need to make sure that your dynasty survives and thrives throughout the ages. Your titles give you power and control over territory as well as over other characters who might hold titles and land of their own. All right, click on your character. I will, and I opened up this screen. Um, characters have skills, indicating their proficiency within a certain field. Some are great talkers, while others prefer to make their intent clear on the battlefield. The main skills are diplomacy, martial stewardship, intrigue, and learning. Uh, martial... Uh, diplomacy is for improving others' opinion of you. Martial is for raising and commanding army, armies. Stewardship means managing your lands. Intrigue is scheming. And learning means studying theology and technology. So this guy is amazing at Marshall. I have excellent rating at Marshall. <laughs> oh, nice, Sir Theodore. I knew a guy who was a Brian with a Y. Irish indeed. Okay. Um, so these are our stats. And uh, Mr. Inadequate was telling us that we want to play to our stats. Hey, Graham Dixon. What is up, my friend? Well, kudos to you. I hope I might have to pick your brain. I've never played before, and I'm trying to learn it. And this game looks like... It's got a little bit of a learning curve, if you know what I mean. So, if I want to play to my strengths, like Mr. Inadequate is talking about, I'm good at raising an army, so we want to be doing that. Is this how many... Is this my army? So this is our military strength. We have 1,106 levies, 6 knights... Light footmen, light horsemen, and mangonels. What are levies? Uh, the bulk of most armies is made up of levies. Um, I know levies like with a Y where you're talking about things that hold water. Not um, 
armies. Each holding provides a set number of levies to their holder. Vassals in, in turn provide a part of their levies to their liege. Levies are made up of mostly poorly armed fighters. Nice. Peasant militias, ruffians, local cell swords, destitute nobles, minor landowners, etc. And are considered their own unit type. A levy has 10 damage and 10 toughness. The other types of soldiers in the game are men-at-arms, expensive, trained professionals. I love destitute nobles. We've become levies. It's... we've fallen on really hard times. Yeah, they're peasants with weapons. They're like, um, farmers with pitchforks that have, like, come out to fight. This is sweet. Hey, Harris Devio, what is up, my friend? I didn't realize that Star Wars uh, had a new patch and changed a lot about the game. That's very tempting. I might give that a shot. Thank you for telling me. Hey, Captain Duck. Good evening. This game is about history, Captain Duck, and about kings, queens, dynasties, and wars. The politics of royalty. All right. Um... Knights are awesome. This doesn't even tell you about how much damage knights do. We'll have to find that out. Okay. Characters also have traits which can affect skills as well as how they react to things. These are illustrated by icons in the character view. Okay, so I have these traits like temperate, which gives me a boost to stewardship. According to Merchad, it's best to enjoy things in moderation. So I'm temperate. I'm wrathful. I, now, this is interesting. I'm temperate and wrathful. I enjoy things in moderation, except rage. I keep rage in the excess. I'm also impatient. I don't enjoy waiting, so time is not something I moderate. I'm a skilled tactician, and I'm a flexible leader. I can do the splits. I stretch daily and have an amazing yoga routine that keeps me nimble as a lynx. Yes, exactly. Dram Graham Dixon is saying it's a medieval family management sim simulator. So it's like Game of Thrones or perhaps The Sopranos, um, but in, you know, uh, medieval times with, with royalty. Oh, yeah, like in the later um, uh, Marvel movies. He's talking about the, uh, the MMO fading. Yes, I'm an ascetic gymnast barbarian. It makes sense. Um, let's see. Some traits tell you about a character's personality, like fickle, calm, or generous. Other traits are specific to how a character has lived their life, such as an education trait or commander traits. You are temporal, wrathful, impatient. From this, you can see that your character typically leads a modest life and expect others to do the same and is quick to anger when they don't. How dare you lead an immodest life? I will kill you for your immodesty. When a character chooses to behave contrary to their personality traits, it can cause them stress. Oh, and I think this might be what Mr. Inadequate was talking about with role-playing. Like, I have to play to... I can't do what I want to do. I need to do what they want to do, or I'm going to stress them out. So we got to just not... We got to be no stress, just get crazy, and follow their traits... <laughs> exactly, Graham. I can only imagine. Traits can also impact how characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave trait, while a lustful character is more likely to feature in salacious gossip. Traits influence other characters' morality and greed, which can affect both their friendly and hostile actions. I gotta tell you what. I think there might be, Sir Theodore. I think you can uh, make your own characters, but I'm not sure. I'm going to lose at this game. Badly. Every time I play it. But I'm going to tell you that the stories that will be generated by the ridiculousness of what I'm seeing unfold here will be worth um, their weight in gold. It's going to just be funny. Like, I'm going to have relationship stress, drama, um, you know, uh, to rival... Exactly. 
uh, actual nobility. We're going to have a good time. All characters, yes, all, have an opinion of one another which drives their behavior. Oh, here's my heir. Brian Mac Merchad um, Brian. He's 18. He's my heir. He's my son. And he's a knight. And he's an irrational lackey. <laughs> he's unmarried, located in Thomond. Nice. Low opinion can cause people to rise up against you or be unwilling to help you. High opinion can, on the other hand, make characters more inclined to join your schemes. Oh, we have so many schemes. We're neck deep in schemes here. Oh, it's mod... Yeah, it looked like it was mod-friendly, Graham, when I booted it up. Hey, Stelios. Good evening, my friend. I'm doing great. How are you doing? He is a levy in the making, our, our heir. I'm going to have you join the levies, son. You've been demoted drastically. He's a destitute noble. Gold. To further your goals, you will need gold, as in life. Among other things, gold pays for buildings, armies, and bribes. Gold is collected passively from both your holdings and your vassals as tax. Ah, that passive income. Larger vassals and more important holdings tend to give more tax. However, money can't buy everything. That's not actually true. Um, certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of prestige or, for religious matters, piety. Oh, come on. This is medieval times. Can't you just buy piety? You can see the current state of your gold, prestige, and piety in the top bar to the right. Okay, so here's my gold. Here's my p prestige. Here's my piety, and here's my renown. Fantastic. And this is my total amount of soldiers, and these are my holdings. It is kind of scandalous, Sir Theodore. She died in childbirth, I think. Your prestige tells you how respected you are. It can be earned passively over time by holding many titles, for example, or actively, such as by marrying into prestigious dynasties or fighting as an ally in wars. Oh yes, we'll fight uh, as an ally in wars. Wink, wink. We'll meet you on the battlefield. Wink, wink. Just let me get on my armor. Whenever you earn prestige, you build towards your next level of fame. Higher levels of fame make other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Hey, Edgar Hilario, what is up, my friend? Good evening. Thanks for following. If you know anything about this game and can help me, I would appreciate it. Some actions cost prestige, like declaring war. These actions um, go to insular faith, says Edgar. Oh, okay. I will look into that when I check out my piety. Um, some actions cost prestige, like declaring war. These actions allow you to leverage your celebrity for your own benefit, and characters won't think less of you for using them. Yeah, this is basically a modern-day uh, influencer simulator. I like to leverage my celebrity whenever possible with my Insta posts and make a lucrative living off of brand and product placement. Spending prestige does not affect your level of fame progress, just your current prestige. With a lot of piety, you will have an easier time interacting with your head of faith. As you are Catholic, this is the Pope. Oh, the Pope. Piety can be gained passively from the learning skill and virtuous traits or actively from pious actions, such as going on a pilgrimage. Um, I don't know if we're going to be going on the old pilgrimage, if you know what I mean. We, we like to fight here. Yeah, keeping up with the Irish. Hey, Lance, good evening. I I think you might be right on the um hitting the nail right on the head there, Lance. Does uh Paradox also make Europa um Universalis? You also have a level of devotion which builds over time whenever you gain piety and can have positive effects for your character. Similar to prestige, some actions require you to spend piety, like 
declaring holy wars or creating a new faith. Spending piety like this is normal and other characters won't think worse of you for it. Alright, I understand. Okay. As well as traits, your character can also pick a lifestyle. There are five lifestyles, one for each skill. Oh, let's pick our lifestyle. Lifestyles represent what you put the most effort to into day-to-day, -day, and each one has several focuses inside relating to it. Every focus gives you a unique bonus and makes events associated with that focus more likely to happen. Click on the lifestyle button. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Choose our lifestyle. Man, my guy's face is always so serious. I know. I would love to do that, Sir Theodore. They also make um, Pillars of Eternity, don't they? Or am I thinking of... Uh, am I getting that wrong? Uh, so, with my lifestyle, I can do diplomacy, which focus on understanding people and their motives. Um, now, martial seems right, because it says, because of your martial education, you gain 30% more experience in this lifestyle. Um, boy, that's a good point. I, when you put it that way, Graham, everything falls into place. I think I want to go um, with what I'm strong at because I get this bonus and just my day-to-day -day is just being a war-hungry murderer. All right, let's see. Focus 5. Click on any lifestyle to see its focuses, okay? As time goes by... Your character will earn lifestyle experience for maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of that lifestyle's perks from any of its trees. Perks represent you practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique bonuses like special traits or unlock lifestyle-specific mechanics and content, such as the ability to start abduct schemes. Oh god, abduct? Let's do a nice royal kidnapping. As an example, the strategy, authority, and chivalry focuses all grant martial experience, which can be used to acquire any of the martial lifestyle's perks. Completing perk trees lead to different lifestyle traits. So I'm going to click on this. Oh my. It doesn't look like it, Captain Duck. It looks like that's just one path, like a 4X. But you can do a lot of other things. Oh, cool, Stelios. Did you enjoy it? I've never played any of their Crusader Kings, so this is my first time. Look how complicated this is. Um, I'm going to have to be, Lance. From what, um, w from what I understand, Lance, you need to play to your character's strengths or they become stressed out and they don't like your decision-making. So this guy is good at war, so we're going to have to be a war-hungry um, monger. So when you click on your lifestyle, it opens up like a, a tech or experience tree within that uh, with all these different perks. This is getting to be like an RPG deep dive here. Oh, I would love to do it, Graham. I just don't think this is the right character. Like in the tutorial, I won't do it, but I'll see what I get. Um, luck can win a duel. So we, we have to pick one focus within the lifestyle. Focus... Um, strategy, authority, or chivalry. Um, so, we will get um, ex martial experience, attraction. <laughs> oh, this will help. Uh, attraction is a type of opinion that only affects characters whose sexual orientation matches your gender. So, um... People will be attracted to me, basically, male or female, depending on their sexual orientation, if I'm chivalrous. Like, people like it's sexy 
to be chivalrous, apparently. And we get prowess, and this is a secondary skill that reflects the character's aptitude in personal combat. Oh, nice. Okay. A high prowess means they're more likely to survive and perform well as knights in battles and in duels. I like it. Oh, I got you, Graham. I'm going to do... I like chivalry because I want to be strong. Like, if anybody challenges me to a duel or if I go out onto the battlefield, I want to help out. And so this will make me a little bit stronger as a soldier and less likely to die. Um, so... Okay, Nick Man. Good evening, my friend. Thank you. We'll try not to lose instantly. I'm going to choose this, and we will get... Uh, what's this advantage? Battle advantage makes one side in battle do more damage. The higher the advantage, the more damage the soldiers will do. Nice. All right. Fine. You can only change this every five years. Wow. All right. So for five years, my lifestyle is going to be focused on... Martial Chivalry. Select. And then um, we get to go in here, maybe, and... Oh, we don't have any perks, so I understand. Okay, here we go. Other characters interacting. Now, having selected a focus, we can move on to other people. Interacting with other characters is key in Crusader Kings 3, and you have many options for how to do so. You can right-click on a character portrait, including your own, to get a list of potential interactions, such as arranging a marriage or initiating a scheme. This is also where you start wars, but let's save that for later. All right. Um, open our character view and right-click on my heir to see the interactions. All right, let's tell our son, the irrational lackey, to do something. Son, we need you. To do something. Confirm send GIF interaction with your hair. Let's start with the basics. Everybody likes gold. Try sending a bribe to your heir. I'm just going to send money to my son. That seems like what a dad would do. Here, son. Have a bunch of money. Most interactions will bring up a second window with details when selected. You can confirm or cancel an action in this window. So we're going to send a gift. And send a gift to increase Brian... Brian's opinion of you. We probably shouldn't have named him Brian when his last name is um, Brian, but maybe we can give him so much money he forgets about that little mistake. And let's see. Send a gift. Effects on me. We pay 50 gold to Brian. Brian. Um, effects on him. He will gain 15 opinion of us. Now he's losing three per year. Every year, I hate my dad a little bit more. Okay. Um, so, send the gift. Well done. You have... Look, his opinion now is 100. You have successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. This is, this is fathering 101. Just Vemno your child some money. Oh, I see, Graham. So he doesn't just innately lose um, favor of me. It's just that that gift wears off over time. He's like, yeah, but Dad, that was that was five years ago when you gave me that gold. I spent that at the brothel yesterday. <laughs> 